it is such a great day today that the french call got their liberation at this day but what is this liberation for i don't know in no country where they had freedom and liberation <clears throat> i have seen it has not worked something very much that was expected same in france so the liberation through anger when it comes hatred is the basis of these revolutions and these so called achieved liberations if the liberation takes place within yourself so that you are no more slave of any one of these horrible destructive forces and negative forces then it's a real liberation the second thing that has happened in france first time in europe it has been recognized as dharma it's a very big thing and give a hand to it <clears throat> it is recognized that sahaja yoga is dharma <laughs> it is but today it was recognized this is a very big thing i must say credit goes to your leader and to all the sahaja yogis of france who have what so hard to get this sanction this uh, kind of a position it's a very great thing. <clears throat> so today i was thinking that we'll have the puja of shri vishnu who was the basis of dharma so far we have never worshiped anyone who were the basics <clears throat> except for shiva we only worshiped the incarnations because they became as incarnation ganesha came as incarnation the goddess came as incarnations rama shri krishna gurus christ buddha all of them came as incarnations on this earth and we worshiped the incarnations who came on earth special but today as sajoga is establishes dharma we have to know about shri vishnu who is the basis of dharma later on he came on the earth as shri ram then as shri krishna and ultimately as kalki it is a beautiful evolution of shri vishnu so one has to understand what is the basis of dharma if you know in the matter there are eight valences <coughs> they are negative positive and neutral 
but in human beings there are ten valences. And these ten valences are created by Sri Vishnu within us. They are protected, looked after and nourished by Sri Vishnu. And whenever he finds human beings falling down in their dharma, he takes his birth on this earth. Ultimate stage is the Virat. At that stage this Vishnu principle divides into two. One goes to Virat, another to Viratangra. But the third principle is what you call as the Mahavishnu, which incarnated as Lord Jesus Christ. So all these three principles act at this time in Sastara, mainly. So the Virat is the principle in which you can see that the message of inner dharma is spreading all over the world. Not only that it is said in modern times that you don't do this, don't do that, don't, don't do that. No. No Ten Commandments. These Ten Commandments have to become your own nature. You are to be completely identified with this nature. So in the evolutionary process, if you see, well, it was the job of the Guru to establish these dharmas into you. And by these establishments you were made a person who was dharma. But if you see in the world, whatever is told, written down, explained, verbally becomes a lip service. That's why we see all the religions who preached about the same things. And they all have gone in different lines. Some are money-oriented, some are power-oriented, some are violent, and some are absolutely false. So when you see this, you are amazed how this principle of dharma has been ruined by human beings. Why could they not accept dharma? I have to say that there are two genes within us which are meant to protect us from committing sins against the mother and committing sins against the father. Those two genes get into mutation and then people start doing whatever they like. There is no control over them. And this is what happened during our evolution. I would say in India traditionally people are dharmic, very dharmic. The reason is for ancient times we have talked of dharma, we had saints, and then there was a kind of a traditional building for thousands of years. At that time we had also Egypt with us, but in Egypt and also in Greece. Something went wrong with them. 
<coughs> that we take the case of Greece, where they make all the gods look like human beings. They brought down the level of gods from dharma to adharma. And in Egypt, because of the kings of those countries, who were very much interested in the death, in their uh, graves, in building pyramids, all such things, not building up inside the dharma. This is the reason why in Egypt also the dharma went down very much and ultimately now Islam established. Islam came because people were adharmic. Also in Greece they accepted Orthodox Church because people had become adharmic. But these religions themselves were adharmic. They could not instill dharma within themselves, so how could they instill dharma into these people? And this happened very much in these countries, and Vishnu's uh, avtaran, as they say, as a Narasimha, came very near, very near Greece and very near Egypt, that is in Peshawar. In Peshawar, these things happened. So it was very close also to Egypt and to Greece. But they became very much against Vishnu because they thought their king was killed by them and all that. So all these Rakshasas entered into the area in Afghanistan and then they came to Egypt and to uh, Greece and tried to bring all the gods and goddesses to the ground. Long time back, must be at least ten thousand years back, when Prahlada brought in the incarnation of Sri Vishnu. These Rakshasas went into their called as Asur, Asuras, As, Assyrians they call, but Asuras they call. And if you go to Egypt, you'll find the Sphinx there. Just the opposite of what Narasimha was. The man is in upper level, upper uh, part, and the lion is in the lower part. But Narasimha is just the opposite. Narasimha is the lion in the upper part, and the man in the lower part. So they created this kind of an image which was just the opposite of Krishna. Because just to show that uh, we have another, we have another kind of a big uh, incarnation which is just opposite and can fight Vishnu very well. <clears throat> With these Rakshasas entering into these people, they developed a very aggressive nature, fighting nature, aggressive nature. They developed their muscles in Greece very much. And the whole of history of Greece, if you read, is really mad. One fighting another, another fighting another. They were killing each other, they were... I mean, that's no end to it. Till Alexander came to India and he saw a culture which was dharma, and he was quite surprised. How these people live with symbols and all that. He said, all right, I had enough of it, he went. 
But in Egypt also, they could not understand dharma at all, because they believed in the dead, all kinds of uh, black magic and all that. So when the Islam came, they accepted Islam. So here came Christianity and there came Islam. They say in Russia, Tsar wanted to have some religion. So these, out of these, he asked the Christians, first he asked the Catholics to come and make them, all of them, religious, because he wanted to have some religion. The essence is Vishnu, but these perverted Vishnu Swarupas were there. Now they went into Russia one by one. So first came the Catholics, and Catholics said, you can't have so many wives. You can only have one wife. So they said, this won't fit us. Vishnu had only one wife, Eka Padmira, one wife, even in Rama's life, same thing. Then they called for Muslims. So Muslims said that, all right, you can have many wives, but no drinking, no vodka. So they said, how are we to live without vodka? In, in all these religions there is a little, you see, part of dharma. In the first one, only one wife. In the second one, Islam, no drinking. They said, no, 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 we can't live with that. Then they sent for orthodox Christians, orthodox, orthodox in the world. And the orthodox said, you can have as many wives you like and you can drink as much as you like. So they said, this fits our dharma. And they accepted. So any kind of restrictions you put on human beings, any kind, without realization, they will do exactly what is restricted. I have seen the Muslims now, for example. Once I was coming from Riyadh, going to London, I went off to sleep. When I got up, I saw all very fashionable women with all uh, exposed bodies and very fashionable men with bow ties and all that. I said, what has happened? So I asked the air hostess, where did we stop? She said, nowhere. I said, from where these people have come? She said, they are the same. In Riyadh they would cover their faces, they will cover themselves with this thing. My son-in-law told me that I can't say I'm traveling, I'm going with you who is my mother-in-law, I'll be arrested. Even a mother-in-law you cannot, only she should be your mother. Thank God our surnames were the same, so nobody arrested us. Such stupid things, you know, keeping women away, men away, then uh, telling the women you can't do this, you can't do that. and men doing all kinds of things. All this results into a very bad hypocrisy. Same with Christians. If you read Christ, what He has said is so tremendous that for everything He said, for example, He said, they say there should not be any adultery, but He says even you should not have adulterous eyes and it should not even come into your mind. Can you imagine what he said? 
Now tell me about Christian nations, where women are becoming nude, naked, these men are looking at them, and it's all nonsense going on everywhere. Can you believe that these are Christians? And then on Sunday, wear your hat and go to church. How can you call them Christians? There is no dharma at all. Going to church is another hypocrisy. And the amount of licentiousness that has come in the Western countries is the limit that one can reach. They do it in such a way that even animals won't do. The whole, whole lifestyle is such how to find our destruction. They want to destroy themselves. Why it doesn't happen in India so much? Because they know it is sin, they know it is sin. But then you have such things here that a priest is abusing children. How can you? You are a priest. Have some shame. Even in India there are priests like that, but not to this extent. That in the college and schools you find the higher authorities of the Catholic Church are doing. Look at this Catholic Church, what sort of a Catholic Church it is. Catholic means uh, Sanatana, is from the ancient, coming from the ancient Sanatana. It's coming the first. Where is it? How can you call themselves Catholics? They are the most modern cutters, that's what they are. What good thing are they doing? When I read about this Catholic Church, I think these people should really disappear into Arabian Sea because they are killing people, all right. Then they are making money. Then they are one with the mafia. They are bestowing awards on the mafia leader. Is this the Catholic Church? Is this what Christ wanted? So juxtaposition, Christ is here and this is in juxtaposition, absolutely a different thing. Whatever was dharma is not there at all. So where do we go? If you think that becoming a, a Buddha, Buddhist, you are all right? Absolutely, you don't know how Buddhists are. They are the greatest beggars and the greediest people very many oriented. I know how many people have lost all their property because of this Dalai Lama. So now where is the dharma? Dharma is within and that is why this Vishnu principle is to be awakened within yourself. And this principle then expands into many ways because Vishnu is the one who is the one who cures. We call him a Dhanvantari, means a doctor. He is the one who cures because he is our preserver. He is the preserver of human. So if you preserve your dharma, then you don't get sick. And if you get sick, it is Vishnu who will preserve, who will cure. So He is the one who is, uh, we can call Dhanvantari, is a doctor. Also He is Yama. Yama means the one who is responsible for our death. Of course, the Shiva, the, we can call the principle of existence, spirit has to go first 
and then yama comes to take charge of the body. It is who he who decides. Where should you go? Should you hang in the limbo or should be sent to the hell or if you can go to heaven? All decision is taken by with the help of Mahavishnu, that is Christ. So his job is to come when there is a dead body lying, to take away the spirit and judge the spirit and put it in its proper place. Now a person who is an adharmi, suppose, such a person, he takes him out and puts him into hell. But before it is done, sometimes these black magic people arrive, take away the skull of such a dead body, because when you are burnt, the skull is still left, or the bones, and try to control the spirit before Yama enters in onto the scene. Thus they utilize that person, his spirit, and manipulate it and use it to harm others or to entice others, they control them. So this is the greatest other. This is the worst thing that one can do, is to take away the spirit and uh, use it for mesmerism or entice. But at the death of such a person, such a tantrika, Yama gives him most horrible death in the sense that the spirit doesn't go out easily and such a person suffers, suffers and watches the release, but he cannot get a release. And it's a very big ordeal for that person to die. It's a punishment of being such a horrible tantrika that you have tortured so many lives. 